June 1997, 1997 uh, was requested to go uh, to Bronzeville Elementary School, uh, met my partner uh, at a bus stop, a park and ride, and we went in one vehicle, went in a company vehicle out to the job site. took us about an hour to get there, and it was a pleasant morning. We got to the job site. What we're going to do is uh, check to see if the uh, hardware would let us adapt new buckets to old switchgear. Uh, the switchgear was in a uh, revamped boiler room, uh, clean atmosphere, but uh, the boilers had been removed and upon inspection when we removed the side panels on the switchgear, uh, I could see that there was a old film across the buses. and. Uh, pretty good indication that all the paint on the outside didn't help what was inside. But this switchgear, uh, there was quite a few switches and it was defective and the, the, the intent here was to uh, order new buckets to be installed. Being the manufacturer, the original manufacturer was no longer in business. This was a retrofit and it was just a matter of seeing if the connecting hardware uh, was going to line up. I decided that I was going to uh, see if I could safely disengage a bucket and uh, see if we could get the hardware to match up. My partner went out to the uh, vehicle to get something and in the meantime I was uh, I disconnected I was I was able to reach in and work around this switch rather comfortably I disconnected the switch electrically and mechanically and I was attempting to remove it from the switch gear when uh, the accident occurred, the uh, it had arced over, and it, uh, there was a flash, brightest light I ever saw in my life. The noise was deafening, and. Uh, I probably blacked out for, I, I have no idea how long, seconds, it couldn't have, couldn't have been, it couldn't have been more than a minute, but uh, regaining my composure, I, I looked at myself and I saw that uh, I'd been burned pretty severely, I had skin hanging from my ears and from my arms, my chest. Um, I was able to walk out of the building, met my partner who was coming in, and uh, he he was just aghast. He just didn't uh, couldn't believe it because it, it, this is just a matter of seconds, basically from was hardly any time from the last time I saw him till I saw him again and he, he just looking at me like he was uh, probably more upset than I was because I was in shock. Uh, decided that he should drive me over to the hospital rather than waiting for emergency help because the hospital was so close. 
we did that. Went to Bronzeville uh, Hospital, and uh, the decision was made to uh, send me down to uh, West Penn Hospital burn unit, which interestingly enough, I was instrumental in wiring. So, uh, two things that uh, I never really got to enjoy was the the helicopter ride because I was out and the burn unit never really did see the inside of it because I was I was uh, more or less in a coma the whole the whole time and that coma was induced that it, it, I was out for five weeks the skin on my face had basically burned off uh, lost parts of my ear ears there was actually metal impaled in my teeth so yeah like spears uh, my arms were burnt from where my sleeves, I had a short sleeve shirt on. So where under the short sleeves, my arms were burnt. Uh, my neck was burnt. I had a hard hat on, had safety glasses on. And essentially that was about as far as it went. Power should have been shut off. Plain and simple. I made a very costly error by not insisting that the power was turned off. And uh, as a result, uh, I came very close to dying. I had uh, acute respiratory distress from the smoke that I had inhaled, and uh, that was probably the the biggest thing that they had to work with or on. And uh, I'd have to say that <coughs> my family didn't deserve that mistake that I made. Again, I'll, I'll just reiterate, if you could actually see this light and explosion that takes place and the devastation after the fact, if you could see that, if you could witness that, you'd never work on anything that was like Part of what happened to me was because of my own ego, because I've done it so many times that, like I said, you, you get the feeling that you're infallible. And uh, you find out that uh, you're just skin and bones. <laughs> I've, I was never complacent. I mean, I, always very careful, always very careful. But my fault. It was my fault because in retrospect I made that decision to work on it hot. Your life has to be just as important as everyone else that someone's asking you to work on that hot. Okay. To What inconvenience could that be to being in a hospital for nine months. What's the, what, was it worth it? Yeah. When it comes to working on uh, live circuits, live equipment, you really do have a choice. You don't, you don't have to work on energized equipment. 
it can be shut off. You're just too important. Think of your family. Think of your family. It's important to recognize that much uh, that can be done to prevent uh, arc flash events are beyond the control of the individual who may be at risk of injury. Uh, today we have the, the tools and technology to, to analyze the workplace, to identify arc flash hazards. Uh, we can use that, uh, that, those tools and knowledge to uh, better engineer facilities from the very beginning, uh, to uh, better engineer facilities if, if we're retrofitting or renovating a facility so that we reduce uh, arc flash hazards either in magnitude or in frequency. Uh, it's important that the commitment to manage this hazard be visible at the very top of an organization. The management must demonstrate the commitment to um, provide a safe work environment and apply that commitment to the unique hazards of electric arc flash. Uh, engineers that do the design uh, of, the, of the facility, of the processes, of, of uh, work practices, uh, can uh, bring uh, added value to pre uh, preventing these, these events from happening. Uh, partnerships with the equipment suppliers uh, that can bring innovative technology to, uh, uh, to both from, a, say, an industrial switchgear or commercial switchgear, as well as in the tools and protective clothing that uh, people use on a day daily basis. The safety professionals uh, have a, a really a very important role in co coaching the organization, management, as well as workers in, in uh, keeping the workplace safe. And I think the more that the safety professionals understand about Arc Flash, they'll be able to apply their expertise in uh, hazard control measures, again, to the unique hazard of electric arc flash. Uh, trainers and educators, whether they're in-house or or people that you may contract with to provide those services to you. We need to make sure that they're knowledgeable and up to speed with uh, current uh, state-of-the-art knowledge on arc flash hazards uh, as well as electric shock so that uh, we're training and teaching people uh, you know, the best we know how. Uh, I think lastly, the, the worker, the person at risk, uh, Again, having had the training and education provided, having had the tools and protective clothing provided, need to really make a commitment to, to use that knowledge, to use those tools, to use that personal protective equipment every day uh, to watch out for their coworkers, make sure they're doing that too. Your safety depends upon all electrical work being carefully planned and carried out. The safest way to work on an electrical circuit is to de-energize, lock out, and then verify that the circuit is de-energized. It's important to follow recommended safe work practices and use proper tools and equipment in addition to appropriate PPE. The decision to work safely is yours. The choices you make can save your life.